so um just two quick things before we start first of all i want to apologize for the mess uh it's just gonna be like this probably for a while um i uh, unfortunately just have a lot of stuff that i'm dealing with with this mess here um and two i want to actually address a comment that i got today um by somebody who was telling me to put my script behind the camera uh to kind of like read or look you know more thoroughly at it and i just want to say that i do not use scripts i know that that's not a popular way of making videos and i know a lot of people like to script their videos and i know that's something that a lot of people you know might not like about my videos but it's how i do videos it's how i like doing videos i like doing them unscripted uh, sometimes I will I will like jot down some notes kind of before I go into the video or like I'll just kind of like think through what I want to say before I start the video. I even like rehearse videos kind of in my head but I don't use scripts and it's just mainly because the effort of make of writing a script and printing it out especially when I'm just on my phone and stuff it's a lot and uh, trying to think of what to write and all that it, it takes a lot longer and uh, the reason I make videos is because I want to get out there and I just want to like tell you guys what I'm thinking and I want to be honest and I think it's more honest for me to just kind of put my thoughts out without the script uh, now if you guys don't like that um, I mean that's okay first of all I will take constructive criticism I will take feedback uh, second of all, if you just straight up don't like it and tell me to change my entire style of videos, um, you can just leave. I don't mean to be, like, an asshole, but, like, it's just kind of how it is. Like, just leave. Like, if you don't like my style of videos, that's basically all there is to it. So, anyway, let's just stop with this bullshit and get into the review. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel um today i'm going to be reviewing oasis debut album definitely maybe um and um i'm going to be reviewing all of the oasis albums uh first of all i just want to kind of preface this a little a little bit uh by saying uh that oasis is my favorite band uh when i started my channel in uh, 2018 um uh, was when i started my youtube channel and uh my old videos are very bad uh don't watch them <laughs> But, um, most of my old videos, um, I definitely made a lot of videos about, uh, this band. I did, like, track ra rankings and stuff for these albums. I did, like, reviews. I did stuff for these albums way back. I have multiple videos about Be Here Now. I have multiple videos just about these two albums. Of course, this one and What's the Story, Morning Glory. Um, and, um, I always just kind of, uh, I think I have a very old video ranking their albums as well. Um, but I was just kind of, uh, would write off, I guess I was more of writing off their later albums, although nowadays I'm still that person who will, you know, definitely go against the claim that they never made anything good after Morning Glory. Uh, that's something that I will, uh, definitely get to, um, in reviewing all of these albums. So, yes, I probably have reviewed some of these before, or done some sort of, like, talking through them, talking about them. Uh, before, but, um, I actually, uh, for, for this time, uh, I actually want to, um, kinda just, like, formally review them, if that makes sense, and, uh, also just give my updated thoughts, because it's been three years since I started my YouTube channel. It's been three and a half years. It's actually crazy. Um, and like I said, my YouTube channel, my old videos are really bad. D please don't watch them. Uh, I am working through going through my videos, adding thumbnails properly, tagging everything, and then privatizing the ones that I don't want people to see. Um, I am still working on that, so, um, bear with me. Uh, another, like, little channel update there, but outside of that, um, I just kind of want to get into it. Um, now I said I don't use scripts, but I am actually going to be using some of the notes that I made from my written review on my Instagram page. Um, so I will have my social media linked. It's actually on my end card. Um, 
So if you guys want to see more like written reviews, uh, they're not as long as the video reviews, but if you just want to see like my thoughts in like written form, check out my Instagram uh, since I'm going to be doing it. I'm not going to do that for every album I review on YouTube or I might review an album on Instagram and not on YouTube. Like it's not going to be uh, perfectly paralleled, uh, but for this I'm going to review all of the Oasis albums on both platforms just because I think that my favorite band deserves that type of attention from me. And uh, formulating the written reviews kind of helps me get my thoughts out there for the video review. So I am going to be using this kind of as a reference. Uh, so again guys, if you want to check out my written reviews or just want to see more stuff in the future, and then you also just want to see updates on my life, photos, whatever, check out my Instagram. It's in the end card. I can try to link it in the subscription, but I'll probably forget. Uh, the description, not the subscription. That's on me not being able to talk. Anyway, um, so I'm going to start off here by giving a little bit of my background with this band because, like I said, uh, it's important context. The other the other videos will not be as long. I'll just get like straight into the music, but like for the sake of this first one, I kind of want to give background on how I feel about this band and how I got into this band before I get into my thoughts on the record itself. So basically, um, sometime around 2018, I, uh, started listening to just more kind of alternative music, a little bit of, like, 90s music and stuff. I don't really know exactly. Um, my dad was, like, playing it on, like, his Pandora and stuff, because, uh, he listened to a lot of it, like, in the background on the radio, but never, like, consciously listened to it and was, like, playing a lot of it on Pandora, so I was, like, picking up a little bit of it, too. Um... And, like, I was hearing a few songs here and there, and, uh, for those who don't know, I am an avid, uh, Todd in the Shadows viewer. Uh, if you don't know who Todd in the Shadows is, he is basically the OG pop song reviewer on this site. Um, he reviews pop songs, and he has two additional series that he has added. One is called One Hit Wonderland, where he talks about bands and artists that are known for only one song. And the other series is Train Records, and basically that is a series where he talks about big disaster albums that either uh, ended careers or damaged the reputation of the artist, basically. So uh, he had an episode on Be Here Now. I think it was one of the um, first or one of the like third or fourth episodes that he did. It was pretty early on. Um, now, um, so for those who don't know, We Here Now was always his third album, and of course I'll get more into it when I review that album. But basically they had two really good albums and then be Here Now happened, and there's a lot to discuss about that, and I don't necessarily agree with everything that Todd said. However, um, I was kind of hearing some music in the background of the video, and I was kind of digging it. I'm like, I like this, um, and, uh, should just go back, like, prefaces by saying I'm a massive Beatles fan. At the time, I was a massive Beatles fan. I've been a massive Beatles fan for years, so, I mean, you see my poster back there, uh, so, yeah, um, so, and, you know, I heard that they were compared to the Beatles. I'm like, oh, that's, that's, you know, okay, and then I heard, like, some clips of some songs in the video, and I'm kind of like, okay, I, I like this, and, like, even, like, of all around the world, like, just seeing, like, the video for that, uh, song is very, like, psychedelic and very, like, yellow submarine kind of thing, and, um, so I didn't really know what to think, so I kind of saw through Be Here Now, like, I didn't just rush and listen to the album, but I did listen to, uh, Do You Know What I Mean, because I saw that song, I love that song, and, uh, I believe what I did was I just went onto, like, a YouTube playlist, like, a YouTube mix of their singles and just watched a bunch of their music videos, and I was, like, hooked. Like, I loved all the songs. So, at this point, like, I had heard Wonderwall. I did not connect it to the band at first, uh, because I think that was something that was on the, like, Pandora station, and I was like, oh, yeah, that song. Um, so I had heard kind of, like, those two songs, like, uh, Wonderwall and Do You Know What I Mean? And, you know, I remember when I pulled up the, like, YouTube mix, I started listening to, I was, I heard, uh, Don't Look Back in Anger, um, Live Forever, Supersonic, uh, Champagne Supernova, I don't remember when I, like, first, like, watched that one, um, and, like, I just kind of was seeing a bunch of their videos, a couple of their more recent songs, like, uh, Stop Crying Your Heart Out, I think Lila was on there, I don't remember, it might have been Important to Being Idol, it was one of their other, like, more recent songs, um, and, and I just got, like, instantly hooked. I was like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. And, uh, so I started, like, talking to people on, like, online, which ended up not being a great thing, but that's a story time that I told recently. 
Um, but anyway, I started to, like, talk to people online, and I ended up, uh, you know, I was kind of trying to see what album I should start with, and I was kind of getting a mixed signal between You Should Start With Definitely Maybe, You Should Start With What's the Story of Morning Glory. Because Definitely Maybe is their first album, and What's the Story of Morning Glory is probably, is their best and most famous album. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting that take out there right now. I don't really think anyone's surprised. If you know me, you know that, that What's the Story of Morning Glory is one of my favorite albums of all time. I, you know... I put that at number three, I think, on my favorite albums list. And uh, for those who also haven't watched that video, spoilers, but I put definitely maybe at number 10 on that list. So obviously I'm a huge fan of this album. I'm not gonna try to hide that from starting off. Um, I did listen to What's the Story Morning Away first. I think I listened to Be Here Now, and then I eventually got around to listening to Definitely Maybe. And it did take a while for it to really click for me. Uh, that's definitely the case. Um, it's, not, it's not maybe <laughs> the case. Um, but obviously the singles, I mean, songs like Live Forever right away, you know, were just like, oh my god, this is amazing. What the hell? Um, I think the, like, number one, like, accessible song here is Supersonic. And this is what I say, if you want to get someone into Oasis play them supersonic. That is, like, my number one recommendation. Obviously, I'm sure everyone's heard Wonderwall, uh, you know, and there's some other songs, definitely play them, Don't Like Back in Anger, and a bunch of other songs, but, like, if there's like, a specific song that will get someone into Oasis, it's supersonic. Play them that song, and then play them Live Forever, because Live Forever is one of the greatest things ever, and, like, just play it for them. It's great. It's fantastic. So, essentially, um, so, just for a little background, uh, it's the debut album from Oasis. Uh, I believe they formed in, uh, 1991, um, and, uh, you know, the background on the band, they're from Manchester, um, and Liam Gallagher's the lead singer, and he, uh, basically convinced his brother Noel to join the band because he wanted him to write, write songs, uh, because Noel is a very gifted songwriter. And, uh, basically Noel was like, yeah, I'll join the band, but I have to have full control of the band, and that's kind of how this... A uh, very rocky dynamic started. Um, the other members of the original lineup uh, was uh, Paul Arthurs, who is known as Bonehead on rhythm guitar, Paul McGigan, who's known as Giggs on bass, and Tony McCarroll on drums, who would then get replaced. We'll get to that in the next album. <laughs> um, so, uh, because apparently drummers are just disposable in Oasis, and this is something that will become a recurring theme, is replacing drummers and other members. Um, but, um, uh, the Gallagher's have a habit of, uh, not being easy to work with. I'll put it in that, in that sense. Um, so basically, um, they'd been, like, touring for a few years before they released their debut album. Like, they were touring their songs and stuff, and they're starting to get, like, a following, and then they eventually, you know, were able to get in the studio and release this, and holy shit this is i haven't listened to that many like albums but this has to be one of the greatest debut albums of all time like come on like honestly it's insane to me that this is a debut album like that's the crazy thing it's like you're not supposed to release damn near your best work when you debut and i mean that's that's why i mean i think why sophomore slumps are a thing is because when debuts are so successful it can really spell you know but this isn't just a successful debut this is an incredibly amazing quality piece of work here and um if this were most other bands this would be their best work i mean the fact that once a story morning glory exists it is something that i will get into obviously in the next review but um this album is just um insanely good uh first of all i know this has nothing to do with the record itself but i just love the album cover i love the colors the composition of like this cover and this shot is so good um i just love it um so um yeah um this is probably my favorite album cover by oasis although be here now is a close second that's a very good album cover um but i know that's not really relevant to the music itself i just kind of love the cover and this is just, like, an aesthetic that I absolutely adore. Um, of course, getting into, uh, the songs themselves. Um, this album, it's just a very solid collection of songs. It's not really super thematic or anything, like we'll get to with Morning Glory. Uh, it's more just, like, a bunch of songs that are just on an album. And, uh, you've got songs about fame, you know, rock and roll, the like, whole kind of sex, drugs, and rock and roll spiel. I mean, it's, it's very direct, like, this album doesn't, doesn't tag you along, it doesn't, it doesn't play with you 
it's not trying to be like experimental or anything. It's just very direct. Hey, we're gonna make a rock record and we're going to put it on to a recording. And uh, very, very direct too in the sense that like this sounds like this could be played live, like pretty directly. Like, it basically sounds very uh, organic in a sense. And when you see a lot of the live performances from that day, I mean, the thing about Liam Gallagher is I know his voice is divisive. I know a lot of people don't like it, but um, personally, I think he's incredible. And uh, uh, just the clips from back in the day, like, he sounded like the record. And, like, he just, you know, his voice is absolutely incredible. And sometimes, uh, you know, I think they sounded better live. Um... And uh, it's it's kind of one of those one of those albums where it's just like you could play this front to back live and you wouldn't really be losing out on anything because there's no like real heavy instrumentation or anything on this. It's just very you know traditional um, like rock instrumentation. There, there's no like giant swell of strings or whatever. You got like Alanis Morissette performing Uninvited on uh, um, MTV Unplugged and like you're just missing out on like half the production there. It's still a fantastic performance, but. Um, this, there's nothing like that here. You just play this straight live, and, you know, uh, the songs are catchy. They all have great hooks. One of the things that is uh, the best about this era, and just Oasis in general, and Noel Gallagher, is that he can write a killer hook, um, just, like, uh, melodically. Uh, they are extremely hooking. The lyrics almost kind of feel like an afterthought. Uh, there are some good lyrics, but it's, like, the melodically, it's that melodic hook. Um, and then with, like, a lyric that's simple or easy to sing along to. And in a sense, it does remind, it does kind of have that pop song philosophy of, like, making a pop song. Or even, like, a dance song where it's just, like, the lyrics take the backseat. So, like, here's the melodic part. Obviously, the lyrics do matter in this case. It's not, like, EDM. Um, but, um, you know, I, I've seen uh, Noel Gallagher that he said that the lyrics would come after the melody. So he just kind of, like, wrote these melodies. And, um probably just wrote these on acoustic guitar and then like came up with lyrics for them and um we end up with this this album here and obviously the singles on this album as i mentioned the two that everyone knows are live forever and supersonic supersonic was their first single and um it's absolutely incredible like again as a debut like holy crap it's just absolutely amazing um it is an incredible song um like, this one, the lyrics are kind of campy. Like, they're not really, like, deep or anything. Um, and, uh, like, there's there's a reference to Yellow Submarine in it. I, I, I think the song is about cocaine, uh, but there's just, like, a lot of, a lot of, like, weird, like, almost funny lines. Like, they're singing about this girl. She done it with a doctor on the helicopter. And a lot of it's just kind of, like, clever rhymes. It almost sounds like Dr. Seuss or something. Um, and, you know, once you get to the chorus, it's just, it's just extremely, uh, whatever, you know, the song has this nice heavy percussion. I think, uh, the original drummer here, Tony McCaro, is my favorite Oasis drummer, just because he had these nice, like, strong percussive hooks, and, uh, that guitar riff, oh my god, that guitar riff, uh, on this song is so catchy, that will get stuck in my head all day, um, just, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Noel just came up with that riff first, and then was like, hey, I need to write a song now, <laughs> and just, like, it is, it is such a good riff, um, it is insane, and this is just a song which just gives you the cool walk, like, the tempo of the song, you're just walking down the street, it doesn't matter what the fuck you're wearing, it doesn't matter what day, what day of the week it is, you feel cool when you listen to Supersonic, like, that is literally just how it is. Um, Live Forever is an extremely anthemic song, um, I think a lot of it, um, I always get the thing how, like, rock stars kind of, how rock stars never die, but just in general, just a sense of uh, You and I Are Gonna Live Forever. It's a it's very uplifting song. I love the way that it sounds. Uh, it has this, like, super distinct opening. And a uh, funny story, I actually heard this song playing on the radio at a restaurant recently, and I was not expecting to hear it, because I don't usually hear it on, like, restaurant radio. And I heard that, like, the, like, the drums from the beginning of the song, and I'm like, is that Live Forever? And it was, and I was like, oh my god. Um, that's, that's amazing that this song is getting played publicly. Um, the album opens up with Rock and Roll Star, which, you know, it's a song about being a rock and roll star. Um, I really like, I really like where he says, in my mind, my dreams are real. And a lot of it's just kind of like, um, like, I don't give a fuck what you think kind of attitude, which is my favorite thing. And honestly, this is gonna sound kind of cheesy, but, um, 
I do think uh, the Gallagher's helped me a lot with my self-confidence issues. <laughs> um, and uh, at that age, because I was 16, like I said, when I found them, I was 16 and I had gone through like a bunch of really traumatic shit in my personal life. And, you know, I think I was just very down on myself and, you know, seeing songs like this, it just helps me be like, why should I give a fuck what other people think? And that's what makes it great. Um, Shaker Maker is the next song. Um, it's a super catchy thing. It's based around a hook from an old Coke commercial. Um, and like I said, uh, the only other single I think that was, that was a single on this record is, uh, Cigarettes and Alcohol. Um, this is an iconic song. I don't really like the way Liam sings it. He's, he kind of like does this weird, very weird, um, like vocal, uh, effect, like, like the way he sings, uh, like every vowel, uh, on that song. But it's still a really anthemic song. I mean, obviously it's a song about finding something good in substance abuse. I'm not, uh, I want to go through this whole series and say I'm not advocating for drug use. And I think that's going to be a lot more apparent in the next episode, uh, when I talk about it a bit more. But, um, I don't really know what I'm supposed to say here. I don't, like, I don't advocate for drug use, but this is a great song. Um, so, Up in the Sky is a really underrated B-side as well. I love that, like, just driving, like, rhythm guitar riff that plays throughout the entire song. Liam's vocals on the song are incredible. He says his, like, falsetto notes in the chorus. It's just absolutely fucking incredible. He sounds amazing on this song. Speaking of songs where Liam Gallagher sounds amazing, Slide Away. Oh my gosh, this song is just incredible. Um, it's a love song, and just the way he performs it is so sincere and so good, and one of the greatest vocal performances, uh, that he put on record. Um, and, uh, the last song I really want to highlight, um, as, you know, a highlight here is Columbia, and that's a song that, uh, is in my top five Oasis tracks. It's absolutely incredible. Um, it's, like, one of the greatest songs it, it, ever written is with just three chords, and, uh, it's not a complex song, and it's just this very, like, almost basic lyrics, kind of, like, um, you just, you're just getting these, like, basic lyrics, and you're getting an idea of, like, of, like, what, um, kind of what to expect from, um, like, the, the album, and, um, it's just kind of, here, uh, there we were, now here we are, and just this, all this confusion and stuff, and it's like, I can't tell you the way I feel, and, uh, you know, when I first kind of heard the song, I thought it, you know, it was kind of like Wonderwall, and, like, trying to express your feelings to someone, and then... I was like, well, why is it called Columbia? And, you know, Columbia is where they got a lot of drugs from. So I think it's about, it's about tripping out and not knowing what the fuck is going on. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I love the song. It's, the chorus is absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite choruses, like I said. Um, even though it is only one line, really. Uh, which is something that I usually don't like. Um, absolutely incredible song. Uh, Married with Children is the closer. It's the only acoustic song on the album. And, uh, it's this kiss off to next. It's almost kind of comedic in a way. Um, and, you know, he's, he's calling out her music, taste and all shit. It actually reminds me a lot of We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, like, lyrically speaking. Um, although I guess I should say We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together reminds me of this. Um, because obviously this came first, but it's just this very, like, weird way to end the album. But it also makes sense because, um, you've got this refrain of, of Goodbye, I'm Going Home, which, like I said, if you play this live front to back, that would be the closer. And it works. And, um, it's just really great. I think, I think this album is absolutely fantastic. The only other songs on the album that I'm not as hot on are Digsy's Dinner and Bring It On Down. Digsy's Dinner, it's, it's a very catchy song. It's a very nice, uh, sounding song. It's just kind of, like, happy and upbeat, and it doesn't really fit super well between these, like, songs which are cigarettes and alcohol and slides away, slide away, these kind of more intense songs. And the last one is, uh, Bring It On Down, which, uh, just the mixing isn't very good. Uh, like, the lyrics are actually decent, but you can't really hear what he's saying because it's just very loud. Like, all the guitars and everything are just kind of mushed together. Uh, and you can't really hear, like, the vocals very well. And, uh, it's the worst song on the album, but it's still not a bad song. Um, and when I did this on Instagram, I gave this, uh, I gave this a 91, uh, out of 100, so... Um, I'm using, you know, that type of scoring just because, like, it's easier to kind of, uh, gauge things in that sense. So, like I said, um, uh, so, and the way I, uh, calculate the scores just for these reviews is that I, I, you know, rate every song out of 10, and then 
add up all the ratings and then divide it by the number of songs. In this case, 11 songs. So I take I took my ratings. So if a song is a 9, a song is 8.5, 10, 9.5, go down the list, add them all up, and divide it by 11. And that is how I get the score that is 91. And my final verdict on this album is it's just rock and roll, which is the final line of rock and roll star. And like, there's not really much else I can say about it. Um, it's just absolutely incredible. And it's just rock and roll in a very basic form, but it is extremely well done. And one of the greatest debut albums that I've ever heard in my life. And it deserves so much uh, recognition for that reason. And this is, again, one of my favorite albums. Absolutely fantastic record. Please check it out if you haven't. If you've never like fully listened to Oasis or if you've never heard their debut record, please go check it out right now. Um, even if you're not too big on Oasis as a whole, I can guarantee you this is a worth a listen. Please just go check it out. It is incredible. Um, and one of my favorite albums. Anyway, guys, thank you for, uh, watching this video. Sorry for a, a bit of a longer, more rambly kind of take. Because I was, you know, going, uh, uh, I was kind of, um rambling there because uh, I was explaining like how this series is going to work and all that. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoy the video and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye!